What you want to do when you solve a system of three variables, three equations, is you want to try to pick one of the variables to eliminate, either the x's, the y's, or the z's. In this particular example, let's go ahead and eliminate the x's. So what I'm going to do is, in order to you know, combine two of the equations together so that the x's cancel, I'm going to have to multiply this top equation by 2, this second equation by 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to say times 2 times 1. So if we do that, we get 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals 4. And then for the second one, that's just going to be negative x minus 3y minus z equals negative 8. If we add straight down, I'm sorry, this is a negative 2x. If we add straight down, these x's are going to cancel. And you can see that we get negative y plus z equals negative 4. So we've used the first two equations. Now we want to use the third equation as well. We can combine it with the first one or with the second one, but we want to make sure we use all three. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this top equation by three, uh, negative 3, and the bottom one just I'm going to leave as it is. So if we multiply this top one by negative 3, we get negative 3x, negative 3y, and negative 3z equals negative 6. When we add straight down, you can see the x's cancel. We get y minus z equals 4. And so if I bring that over here, y minus z equals 4, we're down to two variables, two equations. What I'm going to do now is we're going to try to eliminate the y's or the z's. You can see if I add straight down, the y's are going to cancel. That gives us 0. The z's are going to cancel. That gives us 0. And the 4 and negative 4 cancel. That gives us 0. We have 0 equals 0. This is what they call an identity. You know, these are identical. And that tells us that we have a general solution. It's not just going to be one uh, point where all three of these equations uh, coincide or intersect. So what we do at this point is we pick one of the variables and we set it equal to like a, for example, like another variable, another constant. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, let's just take this uh, bottom one equation. Let's just say let z equal some quantity a. And if we put a back in for z, we've got y minus a equals 4. If I add a to both sides, I get y equals a plus 4. And so now we know what z is in terms of a. We know what y is in terms of a. Now we just have to find out what x is in terms of a. Let's go back to this top equation here. We've got x plus, instead of y, let's put what y equals, a plus 4. Instead of z, let's put what z equals, which is a. Okay, so plus a. And that equals 2. So now if we solve for x, we have x plus 2a plus 4 equals 2. If we subtract 2a and 4 from both sides, to get x by itself, we get x equals, let's see, these cancel, these cancel, we get um, negative 2a minus 2. So now we have x, y, and z all in terms of a. So we have x is negative 2a minus 2, y equals a plus 4, and z is equal to a. And this is your general solution. If you want to find uh, some points that are part of that general solution, you can set x, uh, a equal to 0, for example. That would give you one of the points uh, on that general solution, or if a equals 1, a equals 2, etc. But this is a way of expressing the general solution in terms of another variable. Uh, in this case, we call that variable a. So great job. If you want to see another problem involving systems of equations, specifically how to solve uh, for a, an equation of a parabola, given three points on the parabola, check out the video right there that I did, and I'll see you over there.